All right, so Christmas has come early to the Chili household. I now have my new and improved thin, thin tube daddy and uh, other things I ordered because I figured, you know, if I'm going to pay shipping, I might as well order some other stuff. Well, I mean, obviously, we needed this bad boy for sure. But I figured while I'm ordering stuff, I might as well get a nice little terminal. I use this for hooking up, uh, I believe I'll be using this one for hooking up the um, the solenoid to the uh, the main unit. I also got a better, bigger box for the main unit. I I bought a smaller one, but I don't think it'll do the job. I got this one, and I got some adhesive, because, you know, you can always use some crazy glue. But yeah, so, got this stuff here. Let me just show you this. I got hand problems, only got two hands and gotta hold the camera as well but you'll see that this thing it just barely fits I can I'll squeeze this one in here it'll have a nice tight fit tight 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 and uh, yeah it's gonna be good the clamp is now actually gonna work instead of not working uh, if we look at the reservoir here let me show you what I was maybe talking about before I can't remember if I actually talked about it but you can see that there is a little bit of clearance between the top of the uh, of the catch basin and the unit here and with that old ass fat ass tube uh, it would have gotten really squoze would have to squeeze it pretty hard to get in here it would have been pinched but this bad boy fits in there no problem I mean obviously I'm still gonna have to put a hole you know around here somewhere so I can pass this tube in and also for passing in the uh, the sensor wire but otherwise this tube is looking like an amazing fit so I'm gonna hook this tube up I'm gonna do some more tests with water and uh, we'll see how I like it compared to the old one all right so got it all hooked up here and uh, look at the beautiful clamp going into our hose here ah uh, it, it brings it warms me to the cockles of my heart, I will say. So, we got our test set up here again. I did a little better job of, um, you know, waterproofing things here. So, when spills happen, I won't have to mop the f entire floor like I did last time. But, so, again, a couple of tests I want to do. I've got a full tank here. Uh, and this isn't actually a perfect test because the height differential here is a little less than what we'll see when we're actually yeah uh, when we're actually running in production but it's a decent enough test we got a full tank we're gonna see first of all uh, how much jet we get out of this bad boy will I will it be possible for me to just like set it basically like this uh, or will it run off the end so that's test number one I'm pretty sure I know the answer to the question but uh, let's just make sure go Actually, no, it's yeah, it's going over the end. Okay, never mind, never mind, never mind. Test number one, yeah. Okay, we're gonna run that test again because I think I was watching and I wasn't holding the camera on the on the action. The camera was watching my crotch, so we'll try this again. Uh, go. Yeah, that's no good. That's that's obviously not good. You're gonna. Oh God. Okay. Well. Apparently my uh, my spill prevention was not sufficient to the task here, but I believe that I have uh, sufficiently answered the question, is this enough? Because it's not enough. Uh, now, I'm going to do another test where I hold the tube down like this and see if just the flow rate, if this sinkhole can keep up with the flow rate out of this tube. Because if that's the case, then all I need to do is just change the direction of flow so that it's not jetting off the off the end like this. Put it down, that might be a solution. But I can't do that test because I need more hands than I currently have uh, possession of. So we, I'll just let you guys know the result. All right, so the results of the hose down test was, uh, it was very close. It didn't seem to be overflowing, uh, but it was like right on the brim, like any kind of change in conditions and it would probably overflow and remember that the final product the tank is going to be higher up so the pressure is going to be more and that means you know we're probably going to have too much flow now the, the story changes as the tank empties you get less and less pressure but uh, we have to consider you know the worst 
possible case in all scenarios. So, in the worst case, we're going to need some kind of flow rate restriction. Uh, now, if I, do, if I direct the hose downward, like so, uh, then the, jet, the jetting isn't an issue. It's just that eventually the outflow will overwhelm the, the flow sinking capacity of this sinkhole. So what I could do, one way to hand solve the problem that I'm thinking, is I could run the, uh, run the valve on a duty cycle. So instead of just running it 100% until the reservoir is full, I could run it 50% on, you know, like on for 3 seconds, off for 3 seconds, on for 3, off for 3. That would reduce my flow rate effectively by half. And uh, that should be good. You know, the downside is that then I have to find a way of positioning the hose so that there is no jet that goes out. And that's annoying. But I could maybe like put a cap on the end or something. I don't know. The other solution is reduce the flow by perhaps pinching. You can't see here. Pinching the, uh, the hose at a point. So I'm going to try some tests with pinching it halfway through. And see if that perhaps helps me. I don't know. We'll see. Actually, you know what I should do? I should make a little change here to make this switch a toggle so that uh, when I push it, it's on, and then I push it again, it's off. And that, my friends, that's technology. We have the technology. We have a microcontroller. Let's program it. One second. All right, so we got the program all set up here. Got it. Baby's first state machine here with a toggle. Uh, we're going to try to program this thing. I got the... Uh, I got the programmer jammed in here and it's telling me target device was not found or no wait that was last time when I didn't have it plugged in one second uh, the target circuit may require more power than the debug tool can provide an external power supply might be necessary connection failed okay so I've seen this problem before I believe the solution is Go into here, it has trouble powering it up to 5, so we'll put it to 4.625. Mm, this should maybe work. We'll see. Let's try it again. Program. All right. Connecting. Programmer. Enabled. Programming configuration memory. Programming verify complete. All right, we're done. It should be in here. Now, I don't know if it's still powered up. I don't have the power in down here. So, that means that if I hit this, yeah, we're toggling, sort of. I don't have any debouncing logic. This is very, this is actually kind of annoying. Let me see here. How bad is the, the bouncing, actually? If I hold the button down, whenever I press, the bouncing doesn't... Uh, it's kind of annoying, isn't it? All right. I'm going to put a debouncing routine in here and try it again. All right. So here we have our majestic C code for debouncing this button. You'll love to see it. Um, program that bad boy. Doesn't seem to work. Okay, well, I think maybe hex three zero 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 for the uh, the debounce time was a little bit too much. Also, doesn't seem to be turning off. So uh, a few minor adjustments are in order here. Be right back. Change the debounce hold from, you know, 3,000 hex to 100 hex. And, uh, yeah, it's looking, it's looking a lot better now. So, debounce this bad boy. Now it's time for the actual test with the, uh, with the stuff. So, let me just quickly plug in my, uh, uh, let me plug in my power supply here. I'm going to pull out the. Mm. You know what? 
unplug the power supply. Um, unplug the programmer. Try to avoid zapping myself if possible. Yeah, okay, good. All right. Get some junk out of the way. You got vision again, boys. Oh, wait. No. I gotta power it up again. One second. All right. Here we go. So far, so good. Nothing has uh, exploded. Now. Let's see if I can do this. I want to power on the solenoid. It's on. Now grab the tube and uh, let's see here. We're getting, we're getting flow. No, wait. The thing turned off. Why did it do that? I didn't say you could turn off. Why did you do that? So, is it browning out? It could be browning out. Like, up until now, the program that's been running on this thing has just been reading the state of the, uh, of the push button and then feeding that back into here. So even if the microcontroller reset itself, it wouldn't change how the, the operation but now the microcontroller is storing some state. So if the power suckage here causing a brownout or some other kind of weird spike, then that could explain why the thing turns off because the state gets reset. All right. Yeah. He do, he do be turning off though. He do be turning off. There's no, there's no denying that. Um, could remove this guy. Turn the solenoid disconnected. Turn it on. And he do be staying on. So. Seems like we have some uh, some power supply issues. Okay, I think I might have solved the stability issue here. It turns out that I probably didn't have much to do with the power supply instability or anything like that. Um, probably has to do something with floating pins because I got a lot of those here. I don't want to. I don't actually want to tie them all down if I don't have to. Uh, so. A little messing around, a little playing around, got it stable. Uh, before, when I touched this thing, it would reset the chip quite often, and now it's rock solid. And how did Chile get it to be rock solid? Well, a little digging on the internet, a lot of Google searching, told me that low voltage programming on makes it uh, susceptible to any sort of little very minor micro ESD. So if I turn this on, now uh, let's do it with uh, Dusimo. There we go. Okay, if I do this and then I go to program it, come on, do your thing. Programming verify complete. So now we have this thing. Uh, it is programmed with that configuration bit LVP on. Turn this thing on, touch, and he's off again. Turn them on, touch here, it's good. Touch, 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 oh. You don't like to be touched here. So, that's what uh, LVP on gets you. It's not very good. We're not even doing low voltage programming. So, we'll turn that off. We should get better stability. I'm gonna try this out again with, uh, with the relay, not the relay, you know, the solenoid hooked up. Uh, but I want to make the lines on the solenoid connector longer because before I mean if you <laughs> You saw the video right it was like right here and then the water tank was right here You can't see him because my hand is not in the frame, but it was like right here And it wasn't any good right because if the water gets in here It's no good and the water did get in here when I was filling the tank up once and so I had to quickly 
you know, take it and put a blow dryer on it. <laughs> try to dry it off as quickly as possible. Um, I mean, I had it unplugged. I always unplug the power supply and drain the capacitors before I do any uh, liquid operations. But still, you don't want to get liquid in here. It's not good, right? It's not good for the contacts. So uh, I'm gonna make the connect. I'm gonna make the connectors on the solenoid longer, so I can have the board over here when I have my liquid stuff over here. And uh, yeah, and then we'll try it out again. We'll see if we actually get stability when we have it connected to the solenoid. There it is, the uh, new and improved connection to the solenoid. Well, it's sort of half done here. I got these terminals soldered on. I'm going to put them in the carrier and I'm going to put in on this side. I am going to put terminals soldered and that will just have uh, bare wires that plug into a good old friend the breadboard. So, good times. Hopefully this will make for them nice connections. This will be what's actually used in the project to connect the uh, control module to the solenoid. So, nice, uh, nice proper connector here. And it's done. We have effectively social distanced our uh, controller unit from our wet stuff. And that's a good thing. Yeah, let's take a take a little tester run out. Looking good. We got the siphon action going here. Should not actually and now I'm, I'm a little afraid, but no, it seems like it's good. It's not going to defy gravity or anything today. Uh yeah, and it's not uh it's not bugging out. That's a good thing. So I'm gonna now get the wet the wet testing setup gone again. I'm gonna I'm gonna resume my tests and perhaps record some of them.